Hello. Okay, okay mic is working. Okay, Marilyn, let's go. Uh, well, uh, one thing our group in, is discussing still is the sort of notion of uh, educating our, the membership in our different faith traditions about other faith traditions and emphasizing the need to uh, particularly uh, educate our young people and it could be at different uh, levels, but I, um, I think we all thought that educating our youth around other religious traditions uh, can be done in a number of ways. One might be like the Kids for Peace kind of camp, that kind of thing. But it could also be that we perhaps generate a common program for our children that would meet like once a month uh, and children to go to a different site, like to a mosque, to a temple, to a church, and actually have a chance to interact with people of that faith, children of that faith, their adults, have the adults talk a little bit about that. So we were also thinking um, it'd be good if there could be groups that meet uh, that are dedicated to understanding faith on a regular basis on small groups. It could be dinners, it could be something, but something not just once in a flash, but that um, a group that would meet perhaps commit to a year and meet monthly, a small group so you could have a chance to really get to know each other at another level. So we were talking about education of different faiths. Okay, thank you. Next group, I have a report. Oh, here's one here, Ruth. Thank you. Um, well, we had a number of ideas. Um, there were, one is to uh, find out what's going on in your grandkids' school or your children's schools and, and create an opportunity for Asma. Has, has done this at her school, where she can talk, if you're, if you're Muslim, to talk about um, your faith with the community and to um, expand it that way and put um, more people at the school, give them the opportunity to take part. Of course, there's writing letters, as was already su suggested earlier, uh, to editors and uh, responding to media, to broadcast stations as well, when there are issues that you feel are biased and are not fair, being fair to the whole picture in term when it comes to Muslims. Um, let's say uh, you can uh, address the principal at your school about uh, if, if there is a way for Muslim parents to get together in the school and perhaps meet and be support for one another. I don't know how much of an issue that is in the is in, is in, the, in the Muslim community because I think they're pretty tight. But anyway, that's another issue. Okay, uh, in, in create a discussion group at your church or in your community where you invite people to come and simply meet regularly and talk about issues and uh, get to know one another. I know I don't have that kind of relationship with anybody at the moment in, in my apartment building, but it would be a good idea. And then if we could today exchange addresses and perhaps have you all call us, to, call us all together again around another issue and an op another opportunity to speak together so that, as often happens, the, the excitement and the information and the richness of today doesn't just become a passing thing. Thank you. We, we want everlasting effervescence, not the Coca-Cola effervescence, right? <laughs> now, uh, next report, okay. You're all much more organized than we were. But um, we uh, talked a lot about the media, and with respect to the questions, a lot of them seem to be the automated uh, approach of the media when Muslims are involved or there's a shooting or something. And we just think that there has to be more full disclosure and more education as to what there is, what the Muslim community is, as I've been learning over the year and a half. Um, I can tell you that a great number of my peers and my friends don't have the first clue about it. And then in terms of why do Americans react the way they do, I mean, obviously, there's a wide gap between how educated, semi-open-minded, progressives, whatever you want to call most of the Northwest, react as opposed to people who are less educated, less worldly, less sophisticated, less well-off, and are having the troubles that they're having. I mean, they just easily grasp uh, reach for the first scapegoat and with everything that's going on and then of course terrorist attacks that have occurred 9-11 uh, and all the rest it's just an easy place to put their anger and what's really I think their fear and their fear for themselves um, and then we did talk a fair bit about you know some of the things that non-Muslims uh, think and it's been my experience and um, we talked about it some more about how 
so many uh, people that don't know anything about the Muslim community think that all the women in their scarves and, and all the rest are oppressed. And I must say, a little uh, personal anecdote, when I announced to my oldest son, who's 33, that I was dating Mariam and that I told a little about her background, Vietnamese, oh, and she's Muslim, he immediately jumped on me as I have finally found a woman that will serve me hand and foot and I can boss around and who only speak when spoken to. And I was like, whoa, and I had to give him about three days of education. So I've seen all those biases and prejudices up close and personal. And I'm glad to be, I'd like to think I'm glad to be part of the solution rather than the problem. Great. Thank you. Next, there's one over the far. Steve. Uh, this is pretty uh, short. Um, uh, young people, young people, more involvement and more young people at, at an event like this. Um, our church, my church in Kent, did a uh, pizza bowling party with the Kent Islamic Center. And, and we had a great time uh, with, with the youth, with, with the, the high school youth. Um, one of us suggested to be more informed, the, the, the MAPS uh, newsletter uh, was very helpful to one, one of our group here. And um, more uh, inter-church, especially uh, where I live in Redmond, more uh, speakers to the conservative churches there. The, the uh, other churches are more open, but let's get, get them in there and uh, tell them a thing or two. And uh, more person to person on a personal level, we all talked about that. That's it. Go ahead. Take you from him, Randy. On the next, next. Okay. Thank you, Jawad. Uh, so our table is very diverse. We have Catholics, we have Evangelicals, we have a Muslim, and we also have someone who's who's atheist. We had a very dynamic uh, table today. Concretely, we we came to uh, basically what was we'll echo what was said over here. Uh, our Muslim brothers said they need to take the first step often to initiate that relationship. So just the basic grassroots relationship building, going out and sharing a coffee with someone from the other community is something that we can, con all of us here, if all of us here stepped into the other box and developed that relationship, we would, we would advance this whole discussion. And then uh, something that I've done uh, is I, I facilitate inter-community connections. So I, do, I visit the mosque a lot. I'll take church groups. I'll take senior citizen groups. And, um, and those things, we could talk a lot. We can watch videos. But until we actually meet someone from the other community at that level, uh, I just have, we found that to be um, catalytic and very important. And then lastly, someone, uh, Beth here in our group, said just the simple thing of the, the movie that we watched to post that. All of us, if we just posted that on on our Facebook or when there's a negative discussion or stereotype of Muslims, just put that information up. That was just very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. There's a table here, Randy. Oh, yes, that's behind. fine. Yeah, okay. uh, we got sidetracked with the previous questions and we had a wonderful discussion on stereotypes. <laughs> but uh, one of the things which which I think is very important for us to do is, for us, some of us who know Muslims and like them and appreciate them and so on and so forth, to actually be the, the link between them and our other American friends in our homes. In other words, invite your Muslim friends along with your American neighbor or American friends from across town or whatever it is, so that they meet in a comfortable, in a comfortable setting. Uh, and I find that a lovely way in which people can get to know each other over food and whatever it is you, you would like to host them with but maybe they, it can be a potluck. People, they can bring their food, they, all of them, whether they're American or Muslims from other countries and so on. Anyway, that was my thought. And Ahuda's a great cook, too. 
Unfortunately, I have to add, we did have one problem we weren't able to resolve, and that's that one of our members said that he got along with Muslims fine as long as they weren't Norwegian. <laughs> uh. Is that a joke against me? <laughs> Hi, I'm a, I am a Norwegian, but that didn't really happen. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's Swedish. So um, I just want to mention it's been wonderful talking today, and there's quite a few representatives from MAPS and from Imam, which are both wonderful organizations. But the reality is we have like 20 mosques west of I-5. So we have a lot of mosques that aren't represented and the majority of our community actually lives in the south end, Somali, East African, and they too need, uh, should be a part of uh, a discussion perhaps next time. So it, when we talk about radicalization and everything, we have to be sure that we're inclusive. So I recommend actually just getting to know your neighbors and if you, the closest mosque to you and or reach out because they're, you know, they're more than welcome to have you visit one of the mosques and to get to know them and their, um, their lovely hosts. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think, Janice, you know, on that, on that note, there was actually these people from the Somali community. We made connections from this conference. We'll follow up. Yeah, I brought one. <laughs> okay, yeah, serious. I mean, thank you. Right there. Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Um, I just wanted to add another note. A lot of people have already been talking about working with youth. Uh, my name is Jordan Goldwark, and I work with Kids for Peace. And in addition to the summer programs that we run, Kids for Peace also has a year-round program in Seattle um, that meets on a monthly basis. We rotate our meetings between churches, mosques, and synagogues. Um, youth have the opportunity to visit worship services and observe in the face that they're not a part of. Um, they have the opportunity to, to take part in religious celebrations and festivals. Um, so if anyone's interested in learning more, uh, you can come talk to me or my colleague, Hannah, uh, who's right over there. Um, and we also are able to offer workshops, interfaith workshops, to houses of worship, um, schools, and other community groups. And so if you don't have youth who can take part in the program on a regular basis, but you want us to come and do something with your community, uh, come talk to us about that as well. Thank you. We had a wonderful discussion, uh, uh, such a good discussion that unfortunately we didn't get to the question about making recommendations. <laughs> that was the oversight of the uh, team captain, which was me. But I'm reflecting on the, the question of stereotypes uh, the, the, this conference, we've used the terms mo Muslims and non-Muslims sort of as categories over and over. At our table, it wasn't exactly a cross-section of America or of Muslims and non-Muslims. Two folks who work in interfaith matters, one of whom wa uh, was born in India and went to a Catholic school. Uh, uh, one young mu Muslim woman who contributed much to the, uh, the day, uh, who's, most of whose friends are non-Muslims. We actually had an atheist who's not here right now. He engaged in a very spirit spirited conversation. And we have a member of the Baha'i faith. So, as I say, not exactly your cross-section of America. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see, Mary and uh, Carol. Well, added to all of the above, uh, we also were talking about having a book club discussion, a Quran study group. Um, one thing that was intriguing to all of us was the Center for Religious Wisdom on World Affairs that we heard about earlier. We're interested in learning more about what they do and participating with them. So did I capture it all? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Okay, yeah, uh, years ago, there was a group called Together We Build. I don't know if they're still in action or not, but that was the three great, three face, and worked with Habitat for Humanity, and we're building houses out there, and the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims are all together, and every week that we're there, one of the other face fixed lunch. So it was really good, and everybody got together, and... and Worked together just fine, but I don't know what happened to it. So, I, and I can, I can tell you, we learn we learn our leadership capacity. The same old people got tired after twelve years. We need to actually generate the next little leaders. But it was a great effort. I agree. You, you know, I want to make one comment, if I if I may, Randy, with your permission. Yeah. You know, when you say Muslim or Muslim or whatever, it doesn't kind of quite come across correctly for me. 
Okay, so I would like to actually use this as an opportunity. You know, the mousse, you know the dessert mousse? Limb without the B at the end. Combined together, Muslim. Muslim, S with an S, no Z. Muslim. Because when you say Muslim, some people find it derogatory. Derogatory. Der how do you say this? Derogatory, okay. So Muslim, Mus M U S L I M, Muslim, not Muslim or not Muslim. Muslim with an S, like Muslim without the B at the end, limb. Okay. okay? Thank you. Are there any other reports? Any other tables want to give a report? Oh, here we go. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to actually defer to my friend Samina here, who was brilliantly <laughs> came up. So part of it is stepping up or stepping back, and there's a lot of people without voices, uh, and I think we take away Muslim voices many times. So you're going to let yours be heard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about possibly inviting um, non-Muslims to Muslim organizations to speak and also vice versa and possibly starting a meetup group. Um, maybe just for women or young women, because Emma and I were talking about how sometimes in Seattle, talking about religion is almost, it's almost considered shameful or something that's derided or something, so it's hard for people to talk about faith. So that was something we're thinking about. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any other tables? There's a table over there. Um, our group t talked about a lot of the same things that have already been shared. Um, I'm at Trinity Lutheran in Linwood. We have, we well, had three mosques in Linwood. The Ahmadiyya moved out to Monroe, but uh, the Sunnis and Shias both have mosques. The Sunnis one is only three blocks north of Trinity Lutheran where I worship. And Terry Kylo, who had to leave a few minutes ago, but he's done a series of events called Love in a Time of Fear, um, where he gets Muslims and Christians to talk together and Jewish speakers as well. We had uh, about 300 people a year ago came to Trinity to the first Love in the Time of Fear event. And since then, they've done about 12, 13, 14 more events up and down the I-5 corridor. So I, I would encourage you to talk with Terry. He's now leading a group called Neighbors in Faith, uh, which is putting on these Love in a Time of Fear events. They just had one two weekends ago at, uh, on Bainbridge Island, for instance, with 80 people. But coming out of those events, our church decided we need to do something practical. So we have a monthly group where we invite local Muslims from Dar al Arqam, the Sunni mosque nearby, and we also invite the Shia mosque in Linwood to come. And we're talking about practical projects we can do together. So three examples. We, uh, on Saturday, we, we have an event at Trinity called Neighbors in Need. We feed the poor and hungry, hungry food, clothing, et cetera. About 150 people come every Saturday. And that's a multi-church partnership, but we've also invited Dar al Arqam to be part of that. And they came with all the food and about 25 volunteers about a month ago, um, and so that's going to carry on. Uh, also, they have a playground in their mosque, three blocks north of us, that needed some repairs. So we organized on a Sunday afternoon after church, and about 15 of us joined 25 of them just to shovel bark and repair the swing set that wasn't working right, and just very practical stuff. And then we had a meal at the end and got to know each other better. Uh, and now some women at our church are going to have a, a meal with the mo women at that mosque and their children Every Saturday they do Arabic study and et cetera, et cetera. So Saturday school, I guess you'd call it. So these are just very practical ways. The, the Thursday night meetings we have together once a month, that's just to build ideas, but it's the actual pro practical projects where you really get to know each other. So okay. Habitat for Humanity, I've heard that. Crop Walk is another thing that we could do together. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do together and get to know each other that way. Okay, thank you, John. Any other tables? Have we got other tables? Uh, Mary, can you come up? Mary Newman, can you come up? Rehan, here. Hey, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so most of the things that we discussed have already been uh, answered or rather proposed. Uh, something that I would like to share is uh, w Muslims, I think, don't do enough on their own when there are other faith communities involved in, in getting uh, together at an event like this or organizing an event like this. So we can blame the media or we can be active and create the content for the media or tell our story uh, in our words, which uh, to me that, that video was very informative and, and, a, and, a, and a good example of what we need to do. Um, 
then some of the other suggestions was this mixed gatherings, um, which, which I try to do at my house, uh, where we need to invite uh, an interreligious gathering. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other tables? You know, if, I, if I can offer, this, yeah. because this uh, suggestion has come up, you know, one thing I started doing in January is every last Sunday of the month, I reserve to invite six Muslims and six non-Muslims at my house for tea and cookies. And then each month I invite a different set. And I ask each of them to have a similar session in their homes. Right? So this, like, we could start these circles of compassion, or what do you want to call this, circles of knowledge, or circles of sharing, bonding, whatever. It would be a good thing to do. In fact, Mary uh, Newman, you know, I know you came once there, and I think, you know, I would not be surprised that see this, this kind of might have emerged from some of the discussions we've had before. Thank you. Mary, will you come up? And I want to mention this. Good food is here. If anybody would like uh, uh, to take one, feel free when you leave. Uh, and uh, it's still very good. <laughs> and Mary, oh, you got a, a phone? Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'll just come on. Am I on? Oh. Well, I just wanted to sh thank all of you for coming. This has been... The energy is just, oh, I, wow, <laughs> I was really, really happy. I think um, all of us have something to contribute and have contributed to this. And I just would like anyone who was a, well, obviously our program, our speakers, to stand. And followed by anybody who is representing one of the many sponsoring organizations. We had 18 of you, all interfaith and various denominational groups and two mosques and a synagogue. And we have uh, a lot of people who were, were functioning as volunteers. I'd like you to stand. And I think a lot of them have gone. We've worn you out. And the rest of you who spent a whole day Saturday to come and be a part of this program, thank you so much. Um, all I wanted to say is to go in peace, to love and serve the world. And the response we use in the Episcopal Church is thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Leader. Okay. <laughs>